Muy buenos días y gracias por asistir a este taller hoy. Me llamo George Jacobs and I live in Singapore, which similar to Ecuador is right on the equator. So we have a lot in common. If you want to read more about cooperative learning, my website has many articles that you can download free of charge. Here's what we're going to be doing in our short time together. First, we're going to do a warm up so that you can get to know your partner. Then we're going to talk about four cooperative learning principles. Actually, there are many cooperative learning principles, but we're just going to talk about four. And to talk about them, we're going to use many cooperative learning activities. So what's going to happen is I'm going to talk, then I'm going to pause. And when I pause, the person in charge will stop the video and give you time to do the group activity with your partner. Then we'll continue. Okay, so let's do the warm up. One reason for doing a warm up is to create a happy, friendly atmosphere in the group. And when I say group, I'm including groups of two. So what I'd like you to do in pairs is each person will have one minute to share something with their partner, something in the past week that made them happy. For example, it could be a nice meal they enjoyed. Maybe they had a good time with some friends. Maybe they were playing with children. Maybe they taught a successful class. Maybe they did some kind of exercise or they just enjoyed the sunshine. So tell your partner about this. Tell them why it made you happy. And if you have time, you can ask questions or make comments. But remember, one minute each. We'll pause the video now and please go ahead and do that. Okay, I hope you had a nice chat with your partner. You got to know a little bit about them. Let's go to the first cooperative learning principle. And that is equal opportunity to participate. This means that no one is excluded from the group. Everyone has a chance to take part in the group activity. Why is that important? Because if you don't get to take part, if you don't get to participate, you're less likely to learn and your group mates are less likely to learn from you. How can we encourage this principle of equal opportunity to participate? Well, we can take turns and that's what you did when you were talking about your happy experience. Each person had one minute. So we can't, so we don't have one person talking for two minutes while the other person just sits there and listens. No, everybody has an opportunity to take part. Another way to encourage this principle is by a role. Everyone can have a role. There are many possible roles in cooperative learning. One of them is to be the questioner who's in charge of asking questions. Or another one can be the explainer. That means that they need to explain concepts and ideas or terms to each other. A third way to promote equal opportunity to participate is to have an information gap. That means one person has information that the other doesn't have, but the other needs. So for example, talking about your happy experience, your partner doesn't know. So you need to tell your partner to close the information gap. All right, what about in your own teaching? Can you tell your partner, do you use any of these ways? Maybe it's already set up in the textbook or the other materials you use. Have you tried any ways 
to encourage equal opportunity to participate. Now it's only 30 seconds. Each person has 30 seconds to tell their partner. I'll pause the video now. Please go ahead and tell your partner. Okay, let's go on to a second cooperative learning principle. This is individual accountability. This is kind of the brother or sister of equal opportunity to participate. Equal opportunity to participate means that each student has an opportunity to participate, but individual accountability is, will they use that opportunity? Will they do their fair share in the group? And again, it's important because to learn, we need to participate. And to get the benefit of being in a group, we need to learn from everyone in the group. How can we encourage this principle of individual accountability? One way is to have individual assessment. So you learn together, but you're assessed alone. So you cannot let the group mates do everything because in the end, you have to know it so that you can do well on the assessment. And similar to equal opportunity to participate, we can use turn taking to encourage individual accountability. We can use roles. Everyone has to do their role. And we can use information gaps where everyone has to give the information to close the gaps. Now, what about this task here? Have you ever had students who seem that they were not individually accountable, that they did not do their fair share? And what did you do when you noticed this happening? You saw, okay, we've got three people in the group doing a lot, but one person isn't doing anything. Maybe they're sitting apart from the others. They're not, they're not really contributing. How did you handle that? 30 seconds each. We're going to pause the video here for you to have a chance to discuss. Okay, now we're ready for a third cooperative learning principle. This is called maximum peer interactions. And this has two meanings. The first meaning of maximum peer interactions is that we have many peer interactions going on simultaneously. So we have, let's say a group of four, we have two interactions at this table, two interactions going on at this table. If we have 40 students divided into pairs, that means we have 20 peer interactions going on at once. If we have groups of four in this class of 40, we have 10 peer interactions going on at once. But when the teacher is talking, we have zero peer interactions. When one student is talking to the class, the teacher calls the student, that student talks to the class, we only have one peer interaction. And the second, aspect of maximum peer interactions is that these interactions involve thinking. They're not just repeating information like, okay, here's the dialogue, repeat the dialogue. No, there's some thinking involved, such as giving examples or using cooperative skills. When I say cooperative skills, I mean skills like thanking others, praising others, asking for explanations, giving explanations, disagreeing politely. Why is maximum peer interactions important? Because peer interactions can motivate students. They can, when students use thinking skills, when they use cooperative skills, that encourages deeper learning that encourages students to really learn and remember. How can we encourage this? Well, students work in a group, then instead of one member telling the whole class what their partner said, 
we can get them to tell another group what their partner said. Also, we can use tasks that require thinking. They have to give reasons. They don't just give the answer, they explain how they got the answer. Also, we can teach cooperative skills and we can monitor and get students to monitor their use of these cooperative skills. So, what I'd like you to do to demonstrate this is change partners. Okay, you were working with one person, talk to another person in the next door group and tell your new partner something that you learned from your original partner. Okay, 30 seconds each. Go ahead, please. Okay, now we're ready for a fourth cooperative learning principle. Actually, there's at least eight, but we're only doing the four that I think maybe are the most important. This is positive interdependence. That means that we care about the success of our partners. Our job isn't done just because we understand. Our job isn't done until our partners also understand. So if we can get students to care about each other, then there's going to be a lot more learning taking place. And I think it's going to be a friendlier, happier classroom. How can we encourage it? Well, we want the students to feel like the three musketeers, all for one, one for all. So they can have a group name, a group model, a group song. They can have bonus points if everyone in the group improves. Also, we can have an information gap where I need the information from you, you need the information from me. Or we can have roles where I need you to play your role, you need me to play my role. What about in your own life, in your life in your school or your university? Do you feel positively interdependent with some of your fellow teachers, please explain. Another, just to help you understand, another way to look at it is by a correlation. Do you feel that your outcomes are positively correlated? What's good for your colleague is good for you. Your colleague does well, your colleague helps their students learn, that makes you feel good too. So let's give one minute each Please go ahead and tell about positive interdependence with your colleagues to your partner. One minute, please. Okay, now to conclude, the key point that I hope I've gotten across here, and probably you already know this from your own experience, is that cooperative learning is a lot more than just putting students in groups and asking them to work together. We have to give some careful thought to successfully facilitate this peer interaction. And these principles, especially positive interdependence, are good for helping these groups work well and they have applications beyond the classroom to many areas of life. So to conclude, muchas gracias de nuevo por asistir este taller y favor de decir muchas gracias también a tu partner. Uh, adios, que les vaya muy bien y feliz navidad y prospero año. Adiós.